let's keep this going. And the last thing that we talked about was Paul Heyman. So now it's time to talk about something that he knows a lot about, hardcore style stuff. And even though he wasn't directly responsible for it, the Hardcore Championship. It's one of those oddball fucking concepts, and it's uh, it's worth, like, nothing, essentially. You can tell it's like a Vince Russo idea. Yeah, it's completely well, a Vince Russo kind of a thing. It, it's completely a gimmick. There, It's not worth crap when it comes to, like, if you were the hardcore champion, that means you're in line for a push for the WWE title. And you know what? I was fine with that in the day. I don't think that they should bring it back now. Let me stress that point. I don't want them to bring back the hardcore title and the hardcore division. But at the time, that was fucking entertaining as hell. That 24-7 rule and just the idea of always having this kind of hardcore aspect that you know is going to happen and it could happen at any time. And it gave a lot of people that had no chance at having any kind of legitimacy to them, it gave them something to do. Um, Al Snow was never really going to be some main eventer or even like a, a hardcore Holly. He got to the point a little bit, but that was um, kind of ex- like a excuse title Excuse me, for his him. name is Bob Core Holly. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, don't, don't uh, piss on Payton's grave. Yeah. That way he's not dead yet. But you know. But, the, you know, the, those kind of people, the ECW guys, and, you know, even when they had, um... The people like uh, the Crash Hollies and Test and all that. That was so fun to be able to watch them just beat the living shit out of each other and have those random things. I don't want them to bring it back now. I'm not going to you know, try to defend that point because I think that it went into being stupid. Especially because they can't do as much as they do now. I mean, you're going to have a hardcore title where you can only have chair shots to the back. Stupid. But at the time awesome title and i loved it so that's actually one of the fondest memories from one of these old titles for me what do you guys think you want to start off with drew actually because you haven't talked in a while well i'm uh i'm in that boat where i'm a bit too young for the hardcore title but i can go on a bit of a rant right now about it not as much as the miguel leon's gonna probably go on but i will say something about the hardcore title that no one else will probably bring up and that it looked pretty darn awesome with and the uh all. the tape over it and everything hey it so. looks stupid but it was pretty like it looked like it looked like if i was old enough to actually like was able to watch wrestling and understand it i feel like it'd be a concept that kids could grasp on and be fucking awesome because you know it's just people beating the shit out of each other with like any <laughs> rules so i mean i mean that's a, a typical extreme rules match i mean you could call it the extreme title if we brought it back now and just have everything be an extreme rules match or a no DQ match or a no holds barred match or, you know, the same rules. But anyways, enough about that. The point is a hardcore title is a win in my books. <laughs> All right, Miguel, go on your rant. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I really don't want the belt to come back. Oh. And I think – no, but I, I, do, I do it because – I think the he does that out of love, Tony. He does that out of love. <laughs> no, here, no, I, I'm I'm legit about this because I've seen so much of the aftermath of what that hardcore style did for so many guys back in the late '90s and the early 2000s. I really don't think that would work today, and I really don't want it to happen. You know, I don't want guys to go out there and beat themselves over the head with, you know bits of lawn equipment and things like that on a daily basis which is what the belt basically was it was a spectacle belt i mean it was it was a, it was a train wreck title and i don't think the environment today would be receptive of that i think in an era where so many people are willing to look their nose down at wrestling for being violent and for wrestlers coming out crippled and even dying in some cases i think it would be a really bad idea to bring back the hardcore title I, I think EC I think the ECW revival proved that because they did start out doing that and then all the bad stuff started to happening with um you know the the tragedy that happened and they severely toned that down. I don't think this environment would work. And to be quite honest, uh, people talk about the whole 24/7 rule thing. I think they're I think the internet is so cynical nowadays. I think people would just scoff at that idea like, oh, that belt is constantly being just passed around everywhere. It doesn't mean anything. Boo. I think I think the I think if I were to bring back a title for that purpose, I'd sooner bring back the European or the Cruiserweight belt than the hardcore title. It 
it was fine for the era it came out in, and I don't think it would work anywhere else. I don't think, especially considering there is no hardcore presence in WWE anymore. Exactly. Like, who who would you give the belt to? You know, there is no hardcore Holly or Crash Holly or Al Snow or Tommy Dreamer anymore for that belt to really work. In fact, the only reason the hardcore title even existed was it was a belt given to Mankind. Mm-hmm. It was basically given to to him to hold on to and play around with for a little while. I, I remember seeing when Vince presented the title to uh, hard, uh, to uh, Mankind. So I think out of all the belts that from the Attitude Era that aren't around anymore, I'm glad the hardcore title is gone. It's It's a relic of a bygone era. And I have some fond memories of it, but it just wouldn't work today. No, see, that's... That's why I wouldn't want it to come back because it doesn't have any purpose right now. I love looking back at old stuff and it was fun and I'm sure if they could do that again, it would be fun but they won't. And there's no um, there's no purpose for it if you aren't going to do it right. That's kind of like when people try to argue that they should bring a tag team championship to the women's division. It wouldn't work. If you had a ton of women in WWE and you can bring back that women's tag team championship, then you might be able to do it well. But right now, you do not need to give the tag team championship to the Bella Twins and have it just be the Bella Twins and the Funkadactyls. There's no point in it. What do you think, Burhan, about the uh, hardcore title? I don't like the idea of the title in the first place. It was fun to watch for about five minutes, um, but then it just got really monotonous. You know, the problem is when you've got a gimmick title, that's all it is. It's a gimmick. It encompasses a, a gimmick. It's not a division. It's the same from what Paul Heyman actually even said about the title. He goes, once you've taken the the hardcore match and turned it into a gimmick. It, it doesn't work. It's supposed to be a means to an end instead of being used as something that's done every day. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was brought back now, no, I, I wouldn't wouldn't have it at all. I don't think it was a good idea back then. The the twenty four seven rule was only used so they could actually make the title, you know, more fun. Do you know what I mean? Having the guy, the guy basically was pinned in a um, pit of balls for God's sake. He was pinned by one of the Godfather's hoes. How <laughs> relevant of a title is it? it? It was good for comedy effect, but that was it. Um, in terms of lineage, I think it's better dead and buried. So, good riddance. Here's a bit of a fun fact. That actual hardcore title is actually a, a old WWF title, a winged eagle belt that it is, was... Yeah. It was actually just—it was actually destroyed in a in a segment a couple of years beforehand, and they just slapped on the hardcore tape, and you mm-hmm. know, like I said, they gave it to mankind as a toy. Yeah, and it was a uh, reality. It, it was when it was, it was given as a, um, like a little trinket to him as well. When he finally, when he was furthering his feud with Randy Orton, they gave it to him as a prize to say thank you. Correct you know, me if I'm that whole looks. Oh, I'm sorry. I the was final say... hardcore champions, the final hardcore champions were him and Edge. If Correct me if I'm and wrong. Again, but... that was just a further storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Correct me if I'm wrong, but from what would, was there a redesign of the hardcore title? Because I remember there was a period where I think it was either RVD or Tommy Dreamer was hardcore champion, but they didn't have that old design. They had a completely different design, or or I might be mistaken. Yeah, it started off. It started off with Bradshaw when he won it. He ended up with like bull horns on it. And then everyone started having their own little design. Um, I think the only person who kept it on its true design was Stevie Richards. Because <laughs> he had nothing. You know, uh, <laughs> no, but he was the general manager of Stevie Night Heat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty much it, really. Uh, transition it's time. It's not a title that needs... The finish up the uh, Well, it's not a title that needs to be brought back, and it never should have been made in the first place. It, it's shortened people's careers and it's just a gimmick so in the end you don't want to make a gimmick the entire division of your company which brings us perfectly into the next retired title the ecw championship Woo! last champion was ezekiel jackson who won it on the f- 
final episode of ECW, which was kind of odd. But uh, when they got rid of the brand, obviously they had to get rid of the ECW title because there's no point in having the ECW title and no ECW anymore. And the thing is, thank they God could have, they could have done something. With that. Sorry. Oh, I I hated that. I hated the idea of ECW in WWE because it's like it's as if you would have called SmackDown WCW. They didn't do that at the time, and since they didn't, they never should have done ECW. That's uh, we've talked we about it before. Thinking about it though, they were gonna hmm? they were thinking about making SmackDown Nitro. Believe yeah. it or not, at one that, point, if they would have gone with that, it would have been great to have the, the third brand as ECW. But since they didn't. Uh, then what goes back to our previous episode where we talked about the WWE version of ECW, it was just kind of a stupid idea. Uh, it was a way to use the the three letters, and that's it. Um, that's not coming from a, they didn't keep the ECW tradition alive bullshit, because I'm not one of those kind of guys. This was just because I, I just don't like the idea of WWE having another company as the name of a show. It just kind of seemed stupid to me. So... Uh, ECW itself, I was very happy when that uh, disbanded and when they brought NXT on. Uh, in theory, I was kind of confused about what they were going to do. I actually thought that they were going to keep half the roster at the time. If you want to look back at old Smart Cat Moment posts, I'm like, yeah, Yoshi Tatsu, he'll be like a mainstay in fucking NXT. Uh, but ECW Championship, good riddance as far as I'm concerned. They had some champions that made perfect sense, like RBD. And Christian, uh, even though he's not like an ECW guy, um, Kane and Mark Henry, when they got their titles, and even Chavo to an extent, that was a way to give them that title that they never were going to get, really. And then, of course, Kane and Mark Henry got to the point anyway. But uh, the Bobby Lashley situation and, unfortunately, the whole lack of a Chris Benoit really hurt the idea of this championship. And if you want to go Chris back ben to, what? yeah, Chris, 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 uh, ben who? Chris Ben Blank. Um, I'm going I'll, I'll edit that part out. Then uh, WWE wants me to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The Vince McMahon thing really put a damper on this, and um, it never really had too much going for it in the first place, as far as I'm concerned, because it came from a company that, uh, yeah, it was fun and all that, but. You know, I don't put much stock into a championship when somebody like Sabu and the Sandman and stuff held it. Shrug. The problem was, <laughs> if they were going to bring the company back, they needed to with new talent. They didn't need the original ECW guys because they didn't take it seriously. That was what the issue was with this. Um, uh, they just I... saw it as, oh, look, we're in the WWE. We're WWE wrestlers. They were still going out, getting drugged up. Um, doing whatever the hell they wanted to do. Hell, you had just incredible, right? The guy who was a big thing in ECW, Mr. Adam Montoya himself, run away during a taping, go missing, and not tell anyone where he is, and then get fired. And because of that, a lot of these guys kind of soured the WWE on it. Uh, when it became more of a developmental territory, that's sort of the bridge between developmental, I think the WWE knew about the idea and said, you know what, this is a great idea. But we can't do this with um, with the ECW brand. It has to be something new, you know. And they found their grassroots territory then. Sorry, Miguel, you're going to say something. I disagree. I think I think you needed to start with the ECW guys just to establish the identity of it being ECW. I think you at least needed to start them off, maybe that first half year on the ECW guys, and then transition into new talent the only problem is is that they didn't have much talent to transition into that that la that second half of two of the 2000s was a pretty dark time for wwe talent uh, from developmental standpoint because they just had so many flops coming in seemingly you know and i mean look at yeah. look at the look at the guys from the new breed i mean how many of them actually went on to mean anything mm-hmm you know, it's just they had they didn't have anybody except for Punk, but they were never going to be behind Punk at that point. They had nobody that they could really establish the ECW brand onto that was worth anything. And as these guys uh, started, Bobby Lashley, they, I think <laughs> that was they, a mistake and a half. 
I think in the in the case of Lashley, I think they they did that. I think they figured they were helping ECW because at the time Lashley was one of the biggest stars they had. So they were like, okay, we need star power on there. Let's throw Bobby Lashley on there and give him the title. You know, let's see what he can do with it, which was well, a mistake. Why? But... Why would you have a um, say a big match like the Elimination Chamber in a roster that has no depth? Right. I, that That's what left that... my head scratching. Well, that whole that whole mis- that whole pay per view was a big mistake. Even Paul Heyman says that that pay per view was all was a was a, was a terrible idea. But um, yeah, Vince was blaming him, and he was blaming Vince. No one actually like said who who actually was to blame for that. My point is is that I think they needed the the, the original ECW guys to to establish the brand and then transition into a much more powerful uh, roster base because. I mean, as the roster kept going, you did see some guys like John Morrison, like CM Punk, like even Jack Swagger. His ECW run is probably my favorite run out of all of them. He really, he really shined during there. Kofi Kingston started and Miz up as well. On, Miz, well, Miz started up on the regular brand and then transitioned to ECW. He did his best work there. No, but he had his best. Yeah, his best work was in ECW. He got taken. They gave. They paid him mind being yeah. in ECW. Yeah, so uh, in, know, terms um, of, in terms of not needing the original guys, I disagree. But in terms of the ECW title, I think the problem is is the fact that they used the name ECW. They established that the ECW brand was going to be its own thing, and yet it wasn't. They really did nothing to separate ECW from its own from its own th- from from the rest of the show, mm-hmm. and that's what ended up killing it. Is that it became a velocity and a heat mixed together. You know, I will say this about the ECW title. I liked it. It was a pretty belt. The silver, oh, Which one? Yeah, the silver rendition of it. The one that yeah. was bigger and kind of made for Mark Henry. And for some people, it kind of looked like it was like way too big for them. Yeah. <laughs> I did I like that a lot. It Christian. Yeah, I, I liked that championship. Um, I, I actually really, um, that's one point that I wanted to bring up too. I really liked the idea that it was silver too. And a lot of people really bitched and complained about it. But at the time, when they did that, I was thinking to myself, oh my god, this would be such a perfect idea if they took the Intercontinental and the United States Championships and made them silver, and the world titles were gold, and the tag team title was bronze, and then the Divas well, Championship... Well, done now, I mean, kind it of, terrible. Kind of, but well, the, the bronze part that sucks about it is it's got the giant head on it. The big bronze if, pennies. If it yeah. had and an eagle, and the if, bloody gadolators. Yeah, if it had Shrug. an eagle, an eagle on it instead of a sentinel or whatever, then it wouldn't look bad. It wouldn't look like a giant penny. But if it's, <laughs> if you had the idea of a tier where the world titles are gold, the mid card titles are silver, and the other, uh, the tag team title is bronze, and then the the divas one, you can either keep that purple or whatever the hell it is, or you can Pink. make. Or you can make that um, gold to signify that it's the head of the women's no. division. No, no, no. They should make it platinum to signify it's the biggest uh, title. <laughs> it's the, the, the most team. important out of all of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is something that I actually am 100% behind. And if I were working in WWE, it would be one of the first things that I would say to them. Like, why don't we do this? It would, it, without flat out saying the mid-card titles are the least, uh, the less important guys compared to the world titles... It would be a way to show it, you know what I mean? And I loved the ECW championship for that. Well, since I haven't given my two cents yet about this, I I should probably say something. But anyways, um, you know, I, I wasn't old enough to see the original ECW, but I was old enough. To, I, I did watch oh. it. My bad. I probably wasn't born yet. So anyways... Uh, you know, I had no problems with the ECW championships, but, you know, even when I was, like, like 10 and 11, and, like, you know, you kind of, like, you know, you don't, like, you watch wrestling because you like it, you don't really watch wrestling because, and like, you don't really tell, like, oh, this match is good, or, or, or oh, this guy's a good wrestler, you kind of just watch it just to watch it, mm-hmm. but even then, I knew that the ECW title was, like, the lower tier world heavyweight title out of the three that they had at the time and the fact that you know, i think it only was only on um uh, it was only defended on uh wrestlemania once right with kane and chavo right yeah if you can call it that no yeah, it's so- defended more than once um 
was what? suspended on every pay per view until that. Yeah. Really? I don't remember. Like, ever since the, court, the the company's inception, the title was always defended. The issue they were having with the championship was the fact that it wasn't that the brand, because of loads of issues such as Rob Van Dam getting busted for marijuana use, hmm. um, and Lord. being the top guy for doing that, Lord. and um, then ending up, you know, with turning it into a developmental brand, the matches were really sparing and quick, you know, and it yeah. got to the point where it just stopped getting defended. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I they took I it off get, of pay-per-views. Yeah, I only got defended once, I believe, in the main event of the of a pay-per-view, which I believe just happens to be the ECW this, December to dismember, probably <laughs> the best pay-per-view in the history of pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you know, if they were to bring a World Heavyweight Championship back, it should never be the ECW title. If, if if they brought the ECW championship back, it should they didn't they should just use it as a hardcore title. To be honest with you, because pretty much it'd be this. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm not saying they no. should, but you know, you there's if you if you were ever to bring the hardcore title back, you couldn't do much with it because they have it's PG and they have like so many rules constraining on what you could do in a hardcore match. So you, it's pretty much just like an extreme rules title. Mm-hmm. If if they were to bring it, so. You know, the ECW title was a kind of a hit and miss at the time. You know, it, it, it worked at it's first. People like you, Drew, that have no idea what ECW was. It was yeah, never like I said, meant to be a or championship. Listen, I understand that, but you got you got to realize you got to work with me. I'm not. I'm 17. I wasn't old enough to. Well, like, like, say, young like, lads. Listen, you well, listen, 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 listen. I know, but when, don't, I, when don't I looked at money. listen, I, when I look at the money. ECW title, when I looked at the ECW title, I always looked at it as like, hey, do you know? Especially when I was younger, I thought that it should have always been at least have some kind of stipulation to the match. I mean, it's supposed to be ex- extreme. There should have been a stipulation to it. It's, even in the WWE, there should have been a stipulation at every match it was in. Mm-hmm. I I disagree, and and the thing is, that's one of the reasons why it never actually became a world title because it wasn't treated as one. Yeah. It was treated as an upper mid card title at best, and it's the the level that title was on is now the level that the world heavyweight championship is on. Uh, I think world heavyweight's still because of, above yeah. and beyond that. Yeah, it's it's become a de facto upper mid card title, and the reason why this is basically happened the way that it has is because the WWE don't lack any faith. If that makes sense. They well, never had faith in this. They didn't want it to succeed. And uh, December the Sixth member was the biggest thing. And I think it was Heyman thinking too big and Vince thinking too small. Let's put you it know, this he way. He knew it was going to end the way. Let's put it this way. They would, WWE knew its limitations because it's the ECW championship. There's no way ECW would end up being... If you're going to consolidate your titles... WWE will always have the WWE Championship, the Intercontinental Championship, unless they only have the WWE Championship. Uh, but the basic four will be the Tag Team, the Divas, uh, WWE, and Intercontinental. If they have to get rid of a mid-card title, they will definitely get rid of the United States. If they need to get rid of uh, another title like that, the European, the Hardcore, the ECW, all of them are going to go by the wayside. And if they were going to give it a tag team title, they'd give it to one of them and have either Daniel Bryan or Kane hold it so <laughs> they could be the tag team champion. Uh, and to an extent, you got the – I wanted to just throw a real quick thing out here. The ECW television championship it wasn't really a part of WWE, but just the idea behind it of a television championship. I like some parts of it and I don't like some of it. I think that it works for like a TNA but when you have a title that is built around the gimmick of defending it on TV, it's kind of stupid because that's really only the times when people watch wrestling is through their TV. So I don't like that idea. Uh, I like it a lot better than how TNA had their Legends Championship. But uh, well, the, re- the reason they had because it because that TV- made no sense because the Legends title was like that means it would have been higher than the World Title because it's for Legends. 
The reason that they have TV titles is because that used to be what they would call the mid-card belt in a lot of the the territories. You know, the only territory that actually had an established mid-card belt was the U.S. title with WCW. Most other divisions, if you needed a mid-card title, it was just called the TV title. It was what you defended if you had a TV deal or something. You had something for people to watch on, on TV. Nowadays, well, even in ECW, I mean, considering ECW didn't get proper TV until... What ninety nine? I believe was when they got proper TV. Yeah, yeah, it but wasn't they were until like Spike. Yeah, but yeah, yeah so not. they needed a mid card belt. RVD was their biggest star, but they weren't going to put the main title on him. So you know, give him the TV title. Yeah, so I'm you know no TV title as far as I'm concerned. WWE. Finally, on the next part coming up, we are going to round this out with some of the divisional splits and the most recent title that they retired.